Hello everybody. Uh, today I wanted to do a quick unboxing and initial review of the 18859A uh, from High Boxing. It's a 118th scale RC four-wheel drive monster truck, race truck, um, that really is kind of the gateway to what we consider a hobby grade RC. And hobby grade, the difference between a hobby grade and what you find is a, more of a toy grade, is the ability to replace components and upgrade parts on this vehicle or on a, on a hobby grade vehicle. Uh, toy grade, you really don't. If something goes wrong, you, you typically will take it and, uh, and dispose of it and get a new one uh, or buy something else. Um, this is actually uh, a slightly different model than what we're, what we're going to talk about here in a few minutes. This is actually the 18859, and this is the, the true gateway version of this platform, if you will. Um, it's a brushed motor, 118 scale. Uh, it does come with a, a two lithium polymer batteries, uh, 7.4 volt, um, with an integrated ESC um, receiver combo. Um, and we really did love this truck. This is a great gateway product, um, but there were a few shortcomings on this that we felt could improve it even more. And effectively, that's what the, uh, the new version does. <clears throat> so without further ado, this is the 18859A. Um, so again, very similar platform, but what it does do is it takes this to the next level. Um, it goes from a brushed motor system to a brushless. And uh, if you're not familiar with what a brushed motor and brushless motor are, um, real quickly, I'll show you uh, just a, an example of a brush motor. Um, so this is a slightly modified version of what you'd find in that truck, but it effectively works the same. There are two, there are brushes on either side and they actually contact a component inside the motor called the commutator. So there's a physical contact there <clears throat> um, and that's obviously a wear item. So once these wear down, and especially with the motor that's in that vehicle, it's a closed system. You can't comp you replace components on the motor. Um, you have to replace the motor. Uh, they also are not as efficient. They don't run quite as well because there is friction between the commutator and brushes. Um, and what a brushless system effectively does is it, it raises the efficiency level of that system tremendously. They're faster. They run longer. They're fully sealed. So they do tend to be a bit more waterproof. Um, I hate to use the term waterproof, but they really are much more weather resistant than a, uh, an open uh, can motor like you find in the, in the, um, the 18859. All right, so let's get this open and let's take a look inside because this is the first time we're actually seeing this. And this is also a 118 scale. So by contrast, um, I'll show you a 116 scale. There's a 116 scale versus the 118 scale. And here is a 124 scale, just to kind of show you kind of the size gradation. So, and then one tenth scale obviously sits, you know, on this side, which is even bigger, but just to give you kind of a size comparison. The 116 scales are great and 118 scales are great if you have, you know, uh, limitations on where you can drive it. You can drive these inside. They're not going to take up a ton of space. They're, they're easy to store. Uh, as you get into some of the larger trucks, they definitely become a little more, uh, you know, uh, happy for uh, for taking up your space in your closet. All right, so let me move this guy away for a second so we can get this open. All right, so initially it's uh, very much packaged the same way that the other version was, the 18859. Let's get this guy out of here. Seems like everything looks like it's in pretty good condition. Let's get see. We got an owner's man in here, which we'll talk about in a second. And then another supplement to the radio. Uh, the radio is also different on these from what I remember uh, seeing. So you got two halves, basically just to kind of keep the truck in that little tray. And the truck is cool. It actually has not just one, but one body, but two. Um, so they actually have some options in terms of like, you know, running two different bat, you know, bodies and customizing it to your liking. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> um, as I mentioned, we have the radio supplement and it is a different radio from what comes with the uh, standard version. Um, you also get two different sticker packs, obviously, to, to uh, adorn your uh, your two different uh, bodies there. Um, these these are actually really comprehensive. Uh, they're they're really uh, they've got multi multi language, but they do cover a lot of the uh, the basics of RC. And if you're new to the hobby, I suggest you re read these. I know a lot of people just kind of tend to discard these, but they do have a lot of useful information, um, particularly how to operate the radio, some of the controls, because this, this radio in particular has more, more adjustability than the base model radio. And I'll show you here in a second what, uh, what those differences are. <clears throat> 
but goes over your lipo, um, your charging. Uh, the one thing I will note that I did note in the last video um, with the other uh, 18859, uh, you know, the, the chargers that come with these are, they're okay. They're, they're sufficient to get the job done. But if you're going to, you know, get into the hobby a bit more, I would suggest buying a, um, a charger that is dedicated for lipo uh, charging because, you know, typically what happens is you, if I can get the other stuff out, the, these basic chargers only charge off what they call the balance port. And so the battery has two different leads. So this is the lead that connects to the uh, electronic speed control and receiver. And then this is what they call the balance port. So this balance lead is what basically allows, um, when you charge it on a balance, it actually ch charges the cells all at the same rate. So there is not an imbalance of one set, uh, series of, of cells getting charged more than the other. This kind of balances out everything. And it's really uh, all about preservation of the battery and also about the safety of the battery. LiPo batteries are great and they work really well. They provide a tremendous amount of efficiency and they're packed in a very small um, packaging, but they can be dangerous. Um, they can be volatile. So I always suggest that you never store any of the batteries ever in the car. And when you're done with them, that you store them in something that's going to protect you and your, uh, you know, your house and things like that from any potential um, fire hazards, because these have been known in the past to be, um, you know, volatile. Uh, you know, especially if they are, if they're damaged and you don't see the damage. So I typically will buy, I bought, I have uh, lipo cases. You can buy these on Amazon or anywhere really. And they basically just kind of safeguard in case there is an explosion on, of the battery. It controls it and contains it in here. So you don't get, you know, uh, you don't have a fire somewhere. Um, so I highly recommend you pick up one of these. They're not very expensive and it's really a lot of peace of mind just to keep things safe. Um, you just never know. <clears throat> All right, so it does come with, uh, as I mentioned, the batteries are light, uh, lithium polymer. They're 7.4 volt uh, 2S and they're 1000 milliamps. So this is also an upgrade from the other version, which is still the same voltage, but it's 850 milliamps. So you get about 150 milliamp hours more out of the, um, the brushless version. So that's an upgrade right off the bat. <clears throat> All right. Uh, aside from that, as I mentioned, you have your charger. So the charger is just a traditional USB, and that plugs again into the balance lead of the battery to charge it. And these do these are pretty slow. Um, you know, it'll get the job done, like I, like I mentioned. But if you're going to get into it and you want to charge batteries faster and more efficiently, I would highly recommend buying a dedicated uh, LiPo battery charger for RC. Um, and the, the battery uh, connector on this is a T-style, what they call Dean's plug, which is a very common connection uh, in the RC world. Um, you also come with some extra uh, body clips. Uh, they they uh, they do from time to time come off if you crash, so it's nice to have a couple extras in there, so you're not trying to dig through the yard to try to find them because they are pretty tiny. Um, so that's an added bonus. <clears throat> okay, so radios. So this is the radio that comes with the brushless version, and then the brushed version comes with the radio on my right hand side. So you can see off the bat, there's uh, significantly more features on top of this radio in terms of just adjustability. So it has a steering trim. Steering trim is going to allow you to kind of fine tune the steering. So if the, if the wheels are pointing slightly left or right, you can actually get them centered. It basically just kind of centers the servo. Um, if there's any deviation in the in the way the vehicle's tracking. Steering dual rate. So this actually sets up how much steering you actually get when you rotate the uh the steering uh, on the on the transmitter which is kind of cool so if you want it to be a little less twitchy and you're trying to learn it you can cut this turn this back a little bit and it'll actually just kind of just make small adjustments and it won't go full lock to lock on the steering um you also have a, a speed adjustment so if you're just learning you can actually turn this down to the slowest speed and it'll actually kind of regulate the throttle so when you th when you go full throttle it'll only give you maybe 20 percent rather than 100 percent as you get more experience and you want to go a little faster you can turn this, you know, all the way up to the max uh, speed and take advantage of the full throttle of this vehicle, which I have a feeling is going to be pretty good. You also have the ability to reverse your steering and your throttle trim uh, rate. So if you if you pull the trigger forward, it'll actually go reverse instead. If you push it away from you, it'll it'll go forward. Um, typically, this is forward and reverse, so you can switch it if you wanted to. I don't know why you'd ever really want to do that, but some people might. Um, maybe you had a different motor that was a reverse rotation and then steering uh, reverse as well. So typically, you know, you right and then left, it would switch it to go right, you know, left, right. So that kind of thing. Um, it also has a bind function, 
So if you, for whatever reason, need to change out uh, and reconnect the radio to the receiver, this bind function will allow you to uh, to actually reconnect the car so it doesn't uh, so it talks you know to the vehicle. <clears throat> the other one, this vehicle, this one has just basically you know some uh, a speed control, a steering reverse. Um, this is a steering trim, and then you're on off. That's and that's pretty much it. It's just a basic system. This one takes two double A's, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yes, two double A's on this one, and I believe this next one because it has more functions. It's probably going to be four. Up oh, three, so it's three double A's instead. So it's just one more. That's not bad. All right. So and it doesn't come with the batteries. You'll need to get uh, some double A's for that. It does obviously come with the batteries for the vehicle. All right. So let's get the uh, let's get the battery cover or the vehicle cover off this and take a look inside of this to really find out what's going on with the underpinnings. All right. So four body clips, and those are again fairly small. So the one thing I will tell you about the bodies, and you'll see it, they do put a, a little note on here. You want to make sure there's a clear protective film that's on the body um, that you'll need to remove if, when you want to put the, the uh, decals on it. So you can see that comes off. If you try to apply your stickers to the to the body film, it'll just you know peel off when the body film starts to peel off. So um, just a note on that. And they, they are marked, like I said, so you'll know. All right, so within the vehicle itself, <clears throat> and let me actually pop the other one off so you'll see the differences here. All right. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> all right, so you'll see the body, the underpinnings are basically the same. All right, so it really is, you know, the, the platform itself is, is very much the same. Uh, where it starts to get a lot different is if you notice the motors. So this is the brush motor with a heat sink on it. And then this is the brushless motor. So, you know, it's significant difference in terms of this the overall performance, uh, drivability and, uh, you know, longevity of the system, too. It's going to run longer. It's going to be, uh, you know, sealed up against contaminants and, and things like that. And it'll be a lot more efficient. So your run times will actually be better, um, not to mention the fact that you have a better battery. But the, the system is more efficient at, at utilizing the electrical power that's coming through. So you'll get more more time running and less time charging, which is great. Um, the one thing that we kind of called out on this vehicle that we're, you know, we weren't great fans of is this one doesn't, it has a friction damper and there's nothing to kind of control the rebound. So it's very springy and, you know, you're, when you're jumping around and, and moving on uneven terrain, it tends to get a little, you know, bouncy because this, you know, the, the suspension just basically is, it's a spring loaded system. So there isn't, isn't anything to kind of control that. What they did with the new version is they went to a oil dampened, uh, all aluminum shock. So there is a significant uh, improvement on its rebound, obviously, and it, it'll have a much better control when you're when you're jumping around and, and going off road. Um, and the real quick demonstration to that, let me show. I'll drop the this truck. You see how it bounces in the back? Watch this one. It settled immediately. So it didn't it didn't do a bunch of pogo sticking afterwards. It literally sets down and stays as I drop stuff, uh, stays, you know, very well planted. And that's really going to result in a much better control when you're off road. <clears throat> so that's a big improvement. Uh, again, we talked about the better battery with the, um, the upgraded, uh, milliamp hours. This has a three wire servo. So in the hobby industry, typically you see three wire is kind of the standard for, um, the servo connections. Uh, a lot of the toy grade or even some of the entry level hobby grade product will, will come with a five wire. Those servos are, they're kind of an oddity. There really are not a lot of upgrades available. So if you were to try to buy a micro servo later that, ha that had five wire, you know, there really are not many there and there are not any high end versions. So you could buy something nicer with a three wire because there's so many more options available in that hobby grade uh, product. Um, the other upgrade that I wanted to note was that this actually has uh, nuts on the uh, wheels to hold the wheels on versus a screw you can see that or not, but there's screws, Phillips head screw that hold the wheels on here. Uh, this is what you would find more in a hobby grade product. This is uh, not so common. Um, there's just a better wheel retention with something like this versus a screw. Um, so I'm happy to see that. These tires also have a, a foam inside of them versus these, which do not. Um, that also helps to kind of control you know, uneven surfaces, the, it gives you a little bit more rebound control too. So you're going to have a better, uh, the tires need to stay more planted because of the foam rather than those, which tend to be a little bit more bouncy because there isn't anything in there to kind of absorb some of that impact. <clears throat> uh, full metal drive shaft, full metal gears. It has full uh, ball bearings throughout, which is great because it also helps to improve the uh, efficiency. 
Uh, this also has what they call CVDs in the drive axles. So that's going to have uh, improve your steering angle um, and also going to be a little more efficient when you're when you're uh, you know under under steering versus what they call like a dog bone, which is a little less uh, sophisticated of a design. <clears throat> uh, it does have two LEDs in the front uh, bumper, which are pretty cool, and they actually are pretty bright. Your on-off switch to power it on and off is right here on the side, same uh, as you'd find on the uh, the other version. So. There you go. All right, guys, let's get this thing, let's get a battery load into it, get a body on it, and we'll take it outside and give it a rip and see how it goes. Hold on. Okay, guys, we're outside, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get these, uh, get this truck out for a little spin to see what it's all about. Um, what I'll tell you to do before you get out and actually run it, there's kind of a sequence you wanna go through um, if you're new to the hobby. You wanna make sure you turn on the radio transmitter first and then turn on the car. Um, what happens often if you turn on the car by itself, or any radio control for that matter, there can be a setting um, that was maybe disrupted and the car can take off and you know cause some havoc so always make sure you turn the radio transmitter on first before you turn on the car um, and then you'll notice push that button to turn it on hold it on and then your headlights will be on and uh oh yeah nice oh yeah i can tell you right off the bat this is going to be uh, significantly faster <laughs> so i did bring out the uh 18859 uh, brush version so we can kind of contrast and compare uh just the performance and see well let's see how much better this one is all right, so I'm gonna put this on the ground and we'll get it out and do some driving a little bit here. All right. Oh yeah, it's way faster. Whew. They are pretty tough. Let me, uh... It is a lot faster, that's for sure. Oop. Okay guys, I'm gonna get the uh, 18859 out so you guys can kind of see that. Uh, so again, this is the uh, on-off switch on this one. You'll see a little red LED flashing on top until it's uh, paired with the car. And then, there we go, well, now we're powered up. Yeah, pretty significant difference. But this is still a great little truck. I mean, it really is. But it is pretty significant, the difference between the brushed and brushless systems. It's just how much more uh, punchy the, uh, you know, the brush, brushless system is versus the brushed. And they're using the same battery and they're occupying basically the same space on a motor. Um, you know, so there, there are differences and they're fairly significant. So you can see that one bounces around quite a bit more. Um, it's not bad, it's just not as controlled as the oil dampened uh, suspension is. So again, it's light and it's pretty agile. They're, it's not a deal breaker. And again, we still really love this little truck. It works tremendously well. But if you see that, and then you go out and you drive this one. Number one, you can see how much more power it has. I mean, it's just a lot more efficient. Let me get that out of the, out of the rocks there. Yeah, I mean, it's way faster. And it's a lot more composed over some of those bumps, uh, those rocks and things like that, than the, uh, yeah, it just doesn't bounce nearly as much. So that's just gonna give it a little more control, like I said, when you're trying to, yeah, it's a lot, lot more control. And this again, a lot more power. And it'll probably end up running longer uh, overall at the same kind of aggressiveness, you know, th with the throttle, just because of the improved efficiency of the motor. So, you know, again, I, uh, yeah, so I really love this truck. This is great. Um, I mean, the other one we gave really high praise because it was just a great value and it works really, really well. This just takes it up to that next level. And, you know, it obviously is more expensive, but I think you get a lot more for it. Um, and I, I honestly think it's worth the extra spend if you can do it. Just because you're gonna get quite a bit more truck and a lot more enjoyment out of it um, in general. You're gonna do all the upgrades you're gonna to wanna to do it anyways on the other truck. So it's, it's actually a little bit more of a package deal if you buy it with this one. Um, so yeah, there you go. So I'm gonna tell you, right off the bat, we gave the other truck a five star rating just because it was a tremendous value and it does work really well. Um, this one gets a solid five because of the, all the things it improved upon on, the, on an already great truck. It just takes it to that next level. And honestly, the pricing, yes, it's more expensive, but if you can afford it, I think it's still money well spent. And there are vehicles that 
that cost more than this that are not nearly as well spec'd. So, uh, yeah, five stars from uh, from us here at Father and Son RC. And, uh, and if you like this, uh, give us a thumbs up. And uh, we hope to see you out there on the trails. All right, guys, have a great day. Take care.